What's up guys reeling in the outdoors with you today um it is july 20th and next month is salmon season um down on the puyallup so i'm pretty sure everyone's tying leaders getting ready filling their tackle boxes getting their reel spooled new pools uh which i have a new pull um that i have in the box that's I'm gonna reveal to you guys but first and foremost uh, let's talk about leader and like setup and whatever whatnot and um, most people down in the Puyallup there they run very different links depends on what fisherman you are or whoever you are um, some of them consider you a snagger or you know so on and so forth you know we're all just down there trying to catch some fish but anyways, um, I'm going to show you a way to set up a way down to fish down in the Puyallup. Um, this is normally a typical way of fishing down there, especially on the lower uh, part of it, towards the soccer fields and everything, um, or aka combat fishing. So I'm going to show you guys how to tie a setup. Um, and uh, get everything going if you guys are first timers wanting to go down there. Um, so I'm going to show you how I do it. So I use one pink uh, 10 millimeter bead. Um, it don't matter what color. You can use whatever color. Um, I like using pink and white. And uh, I have other different colors. You know, you don't have to use the same color I'm using. Um, it don't really matter down there. Um, I'm using a 2 aught Gamagatsu hook. Um, barb is pinched. And I'm going to show you guys how to tie a setup if you guys want to add yarn uh, to your corky setup. Um, mine, I don't have any uh, high vis yellow line for you guys right now, so mine with me. I'm dealing with what I got, gentlemen. So I go through the eyelet off the back shank of the hook. I leave about, you know, about two two and a half finger lengths of a tag in back here it just helps to tighten cinch everything up um, I'm using a, ten, a 15 pound fluorocarbon too so I'm gonna start wrap I wrap about eight to ten times two three four five six seven eight nine ten and then with this line, I pinch with my ring finger and my pinky finger, and it keeps the tension right here on this line and the wrap so it doesn't get unraveled. That's the main part of tying this loop or this egg loop knot um, is what it is uh, for your corky and yarny setup. And I take my other end of my line, come back through the eyelet the opposite way because we went this way. So with the uh, you know the end, we got our tag in there, and our end, we're gonna come back through. I like to leave about the same length of tag in, about two two and a half fingers. Now I'm gonna lay this line down the shank of this hook. As best as I can while pinching it with the two fingers and then I'll retake the line that we have in these fingers down here in our ring finger and pinky finger and continue our wraps I do another ten times two three four five six seven eight nine ten now when you get to here I like to repinch now um at this point you're pretty much almost done with tying uh your egg loop knot so with the tagging that we went through the eyelet i slowly pull because you don't want to cause any knots or anything in your line now when you get to the end part i like to take my right hand and pinch as you can see I have everything pinch with these two fingers everything don't let it unravel or anything 
and then you continue pulling the tag in that's through your eyelet sorry if the video quality is not as good let me adjust my lighting hopefully that'll help so as you can see we have everything kind of uh, you know almost cinched down so I like to take this tag end here kind of give it a little pull get everything set and then I finish pulling this off don't use your teeth to cut your line make sure you throw away your line too I have a trash can right here next to me so there you have it. You have your egg loop knot. There's your loop. You know, you can use this for floating eggs, whatever, whatnot. But this is what I use to help me tie my corkies and yarnies. And I like to make sure that my white is out because I try to make it look more noticeable or look like it's milked so a fish would hit or get irritated so there you go as you can see I placed the yarn in there and I I just set wherever I want my colors at and then what I like to do is all this little fuzz stuff grab scissors here I like to just a barely trim that off to where it's you know about the exact same length of your hook as you can see there so now you have your yarny attached to your egg loop knot you can then whatever leader length you're using then you can add your corky now you have a corky <clears throat> and yarny set up ready to tie on and then you would go ahead on the swivel just for demonstration and obviously you would take your swivel most people they run a barrel swivel which I'm going to show you right here so a barrel swivel with a, a clamp um, you would attach your um, main line uh, to this end where your clamp is at let it dangle and then the other end you would tie your leader Ooh, don't come undone please there we go Sorry about that. Make sure you wet your, your fluorocarbon monofilament so it doesn't burn upon itself when you cinch down your knot. Obviously cut your tag in. And then there you would have it oh, unless you want to attach a weight. Then you would attach a weight to your clamp. And then you would tie this other end to um, your main line or what a lot of people like to also run when they're um, down on the Puyallup. They're called shuttles. And uh, uh, this is what a shuttle looks like. You just run your uh, main line through here. Um, you just hook on your uh, weight, whatever size you're going to use. Um, you would put a bead whatever uh, where your main line is at so it would come down to uh, your shuttle would come down to your bead and not do anything to your knot and uh, that's the main setup that you would have for drift, drift fishing for salmon this year out on the Puyallup River um, good luck guys and I will have another video out of the revealing of the fishing pole